John Kennedy's assassination in November of 63 set forth all of this uh, 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 moralizing um, um, suggests that the, the tough-minded tendency within liberalism was a, um, was a losing battle. It was, it was trying to get liberalism to be something uh, contrary to its nature. Now, Bill, you make uh, the argument in, in your book, The Pity Party, that um, American liberalism changed significantly with the assassination of John Kennedy. Um, why and what's the nature of that change and how, does it, um, how did it contribute to the um, rise of liberal compassion? There was a, a period um, let's say between um, the start of World War II and John Kennedy's assassination, let's say, when um, <clears throat> liberalism, uh, the leading figures within liberalism, seemed to realize they had a problem that the uh, sort of uh, Eleanor Roosevelt sob sister tendency within liberalism <laughs> was doing their cause more harm than good. Um, and so um, in the wake of the war and the Cold War and the realization of the uh, staggering depravities to which uh, human beings were, were, were capable of committing um, uh, after we uh, we won the war and understood what Nazi Germany was about. Um, uh, liberalism uh, <clears throat> went through a phrase where it prided itself on being not uh, soft-hearted but tough-minded. Um, and it, uh, uh, it uh, emphasized within itself those tendencies that were um, um, uh, pragmatic, uh, clear-eyed, um, bold. Uh, this was the uh, sort of entire um, uh, topspin of, of the new frontier. Um, but it seemed that... Uh, and now, I, you, you cleverly began this, began your answer by saying, uh, from the end of World War II to mm -hmm. the Kennedy years. What about the New Deal? Well, I is, think, a, is the New Deal a compassion party mm -hmm. um, too, or or was it was its attitude different somehow? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, um, uh, uh, I think it was more sort of up for grabs then. Um, uh, a, a a liberal journalist um, whose work um, usually I like and respect, Jill Klein, um, has written that there was sort of a. a in the 1930s, a, a Franklin tendency and an Eleanor tendency. Uh, the uh, FDR's uh, New Deal um, could be, when it suited him and his needs, um, uh, much more pragmatic. Um, um, Eleanor's uh, New Deal, uh, which often gained the upper hand as circumstances dictated, was, was far more a sort of um, idealistic and, and uh, moony. Um, she uh, was the first, and, uh, first lady to actually hold a, a government position. She was um, um, a co-director with, I think, Fiorella LaGuardia <laughs> of, a, a, of a federal uh, agency that was supposed to um, promote civil defense planning. Uh, now, LaGuardia <laughs> understood this uh, in um, fairly straightforward terms. Uh, so we needed bomb shelters and concrete, evacuation yes, plans. Concrete and, terms, yeah. Yes, and, and, <clears throat> and, and, and strengthened fire departments. Um, Eleanor saw this as an occasion to uh, promote a, a social welfare agenda. Um, so she wanted um, uh, um, instructors to teach dance routines to children so that they could stay uh, 
flexible uh, during uh, long periods in bomb shelters and this sort of thing. Um, this was uh, even in, uh, sort of when FDR was in a strong political position. This was a huge political embarrassment. Democrats and Republicans alike joined in saying this is, this is just nuts. This is not the way a, a country governs itself. So I think that um, uh, that, that but so, so Ken, but post Kennedy is yes, it Eleanorization I, of uh, yes, the I, Democrats. I, I think that uh, the, the 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 vehemence, uh, suddenness with which uh, John Kennedy's assassination in November '63 set forth all of this uh, 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 moralizing. Um, um, suggest that the the tough-minded tendency within liberalism was a um, was a losing battle. It was it was trying to get liberalism to be something uh, contrary to its nature. You you contrast the the very uh, um, uh, measured uh, uh, cool um, rhetoric and mm -hmm. and uh, cautious actions of John Kennedy with the um, evangelical fervor with which just uh, eight years after JFK's race, his brother Robert um, ran for president uh, in 1968. And you, you see, uh, even with the one family, how far liberalism changed in, in that short period. Yeah. And well, uh, let me just ask one follow-up there. I mean, uh, uh, Jim Pearson has, uh, has written an interesting book about the effect of the ass assassination right. um, and the, uh, the emergence of Camelot as kind of the, the uh, official history of mm. the de Democrats before yeah. the 60s. Um, but uh, one thing he emphasized was the anti-American tone that came out of, the, uh, of liberalism after Kennedy's assassination, the argument being that the assassination proved there's something wrong with America. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it's not just the elites, it's not just the rich, but there's, this is a sick society a sick in some society, way. Yeah. And you're emphasizing, in your argument, something slightly different, which is soft-heartedness mm -hmm. came out of those changes in the 60s. Now, soft-heartedness and anti-Americanism are not usually thought of as the same thing, though maybe they go together. What, how I, do you I see think that? They, I think they go together in the yeah. sense that um, the, the critique that America was a sick, sick society, that was the diagnosis. The cure was we needed to be much more compassionate. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, the change further went from saying prior to um, uh, um, uh, JFK's assassination, um, there was a sense that um, in trying, even I think uh, uh, the, the sort of Eleanor Roosevelt uh, wing of the Democratic Party and that, that sensibility, um, it was still quite patriotic. Uh, that is, it believed mm -hmm. that the social improvements it was trying to bring about were ones that would make America more American, that it would take what was good in America and build on it. But after the, um, the six society um, uh, framework was established, um, now we had, a, in, a, in a sense, a far uh, more ambitious and um, um, uh, severe kind of, of, of moralism at work, which said um, uh, doing right by people, relieving suffering. Mm -hmm. um, the suffering that we're relieving is mostly suffering that we've inflicted, that American racism and colonialism and uh, exploitation. Um, so this is, it's not just a matter of, of uh, Making, bringing more and more people into the bounty and promise of America, but it's, it's, it means atoning for the grievous sins that have been committed against people over the years. Um, and uh, so I think the, the Sikh society and the compassion fit together in that way. And uh, you get both, um, you, well, you get two possible, uh, two possible remedies. One is revolution mm -hmm. and the other is therapy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and liberalism seems to have considered both, <laughs> but decided that therapy was the way to go, or that through therapy one could have a slow revolution, maybe. Uh, yes, uh, and again, it's a it's, um, uh, uh, courage of convictions problem. Uh, the, the, um, to take seriously an argument, um, let's say, um, for uh, um, 
such as the, the one recently by uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates for uh, reparations, mm -hmm. um, is to say that uh, the people who've suffered most acutely from America's um, 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 shortcomings, um, uh, blacks descended from slaves, um, really have uh, no um, basis uh, to be um, loyal American citizens, that uh, they, they should stand in relation to the American regime as, as revolutionaries seeking to overthrow it and, and establish their rights. Um, but since um, that posture uh, doesn't seem to have many takers and didn't do the left a lot of good when even a few people seemed to take it seriously back in the 1960s, the, the softer approach of saying we need to reform, improve, ameliorate is, is the path of um, least resistance mm -hmm. politically. Mm -hmm.